Hi, my name is Jeff Godfrey, and uh, this is my Embedded Systems Term Project. Uh, so we're going to start off asking a question. Am I psychic? Can I guess the number produced by a pseudo-random number generator? And am I more likely to be psychic with a small number base? Uh, for the experiment, what we're going to do is random numbers will be generated on the PIC using pulse width measurements accurate to one millisecond. Time will be measured between the rising edge of RB0 and falling edge of RB1 using INT0, INT1, and timer zero interrupts. The modulo operator, plus one, will be performed on this time value to produce a seated pseudo-random number, which will then uh, be output by the serial port onto my laptop for statistical analysis. I'll run two trials, 50 samples each. The first will be run with numbers generated between one and 10 inclusive. The second will be run with numbers generated between one and five inclusive. Uh, then I'm going to go ahead and create a binomial distribution of both trials to determine what the actual probability of me being psychic is. And that's defined as 100% correct guesses. So we've got the binomial equation here, um, <clears throat> where n is the number of samples, x is the number of correct psychic guesses, and p is the actual probability of success. x is going to vary from 0 to 5, 50, um, with 0 correct guesses, and then 50 correct guesses, or 100% accuracy. Uh, for the first trial, uh, probability will be equal to 10%, or 0.1. We've got 10 numbers, 10% 10 chance of, of getting the actual number. For the second, probability will be 20%, or 0.2. We'll have five numbers, 20% uh, chance of picking the correct one. Next, we're going to go ahead and do a paired t-test, um, where the null hypothesis states that I am indeed a psych is psychic. So the, no, the null hypothesis is defined as the mean of the actual um, actual numbers is equal to the mean of the guessed numbers. Or it's defined as the mean of the actual numbers minus the mean of the guessed numbers is equal to zero. Finally, at the end, we'll do a 95% two-tail confidence interval um, to determine you know, what is the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis. So we'll go ahead and look at the pick here. We've got it set up so the number that's going to be output to the laptop is uh, placed right here. And we've also got the time elapsed uh, between the rising edge of RB0 and the falling edge of RB1, accurate to one millisecond. So we'll go ahead and press some buttons here. You can see we got the time elapsed and then the number that results from the modulo operator. We've got uh, modulo five plus one right now. So we're going to get numbers between one and five. And then we'll go ahead and look up here and you can see those numbers are being output through the serial port to the laptop. I went ahead and did the project here, not to bore you guys, but I ran our trials and here's the data we got from it. So if we look at the uh, binomial distribution where our probability is equal to 0.1, where we have, uh, we have to guess between one and 10, uh, you can see we get the most number of correct guesses uh, would be five and that gives us like a around an 18 percent maybe a little over 18 percent chance you can see uh, the probability of getting uh, more and more correct guesses just just dwindles up here so it is uh, i believe it was one times 10 to the negative 48 percent chance likely that i get all 50 guesses correct so statistical anomaly right there now I went ahead and plugged this all into Excel. So we've got our guess number, we've got our guess, our guess, we've got the actual number resulting from the pick, and then we've got the difference of the two right here, X sub D. Okay, and then uh, our X, X sub D, uh, X bar sub D is our sample mean, which is the average of the differences. Uh, then we've got our standard deviation here, which is a, also a standard deviation of the, I should say, difference of the values. Then we've got our t-critical score, which came out to, this is our calculated t-score, which is negative 0.51. Uh, then our t-alpha, uh, we want a 95% two-tailed uh, confidence interval. Therefore, each tail is going to be 2.5%. So I went ahead and looked this up in stat track. Uh, this should actually be a negative number, but I was doing this in Excel and it was just much easier to do the calculations showing it as positive. So we've got negative 2.01, 2.01, 2.01, 2.01, 2.01, 2.01, 2.01, 2.01, 2.01, 2.01, 2.01, 2.01, 2.01, 2.01, 2.01, 2.01, 
Our T critical is much higher than that. Therefore, it is out of the rejection band and unable to reject the null hypothesis. Then we look at our 95% confidence interval. We're 95% certain uh, that our T critical will fall in between negative 1.29 and 0 0.77. <clears throat> Again, uh, that's out of the range of the rejection band, so we're unable to reject the null hypothesis. Now we're going to look at our trial where we ran with uh, numbers 1 through 5. And let's go ahead and check this out and compare this to when we ran numbers with uh, 1 through 10. You can see it shifted quite a bit. Um, reducing the numbers by half actually made twice as many guesses more probable. Um, still, if you look, uh, if you look at the number of correct guesses as we get higher and higher, again, it just becomes a statistical anomaly. Um, pretty much 100% that I'm not psychic. All right, and again, we've got our guess number our guess, our actual number, and the difference of the two. From that, we create uh, our data values here. We got our sample mean, our standard deviation, and with those we compute our t-critical, which is 0 0.661. And now we've got uh, t-alpha, again, this should be negative 2.01. So again, our t-critical is out of that rejection band, and we're unable to reject the null hypothesis. And if we look at the 95% uh, confidence interval, we are 95% certain that our t-score will fall in between, uh, our critical t will fall in between negative 0.4 and 0 0.8. And so we are 95% certain that we cannot reject the null hypothesis. Now, funny thing about statistics. So doing this, uh, doing this paired t-test, what we're actually calculating is the likelihood that the difference of the means is zero. So what we're kind of saying is, I may guess 100% likely, however, it is not gonna be in the right order. Um, I think that can be shown from the uh, binomial distribution. We're highly, highly unlikely to guess all of these 100%, like actually in a row in the correct order. But, um, you know, I'm still maybe psychic. We can't reject that null hypothesis, so I just can't guess them in the correct order. Um, so in conclusion here, I may or may not be psychic, and also, as can be seen from the binomial distributions, um, again, decreasing the numbers by half led to uh, twice as many correct guesses. So, I mean, if we had, you know, a probability of 80%, we'd probably be up somewhere around here more likely chance of being psychic. That was my project. Thank you.